A type B malleolar fracture follows external rotation trauma. The body of the talus is rotated laterally. The fibular fracture often leaves the upper part of the anterior tibial fibula ligament intact. Medially, there may also be tearing of the deltoid ligament or a fracture of the medial malleolus. The distal fragment tends to be shifted proximally, posteriorly, and also to be somewhat rotated. It remains attached to the posterior tibial fibular syndesmotic ligament. The fixation is achieved with an independent interfragmentary cortical lag screw. This fixation is secured with a neutralization plate. Usually a five-hole, one-third tubular plate is suitable. The patient is operated upon in the supine position. The injured leg should be elevated to facilitate intraoperative lateral x-ray control. The fibular fracture is reduced and temporarily held with the small reduction forceps with points. A 3.5 millimeter gliding hole for the cortical lag screw is drilled into the ventral cortical bone of the proximal fragment. We then insert the 2.5 millimeter insert drill sleeve into the gliding hole until it reaches the opposite cortical bone and then drill with a 2.5 millimeter drill. The length of the hole is measured and the posterior cortex tapped with the cortical tap. When inserting the lag screw, the compression effect at the fracture line should be closely observed. The reduction forceps should be removed before the final tightening of the screw. A five-hole, one-third tubular plate is positioned so that two screws find a secure hold in the distal and two in the proximal fragments. Before the plate is finally applied, it must be contoured. To accomplish this, we use the flat-nosed pliers, the bending pliers, and the special aluminum template. The plate is contoured distally with a short, sharp bend. In the center, the plate's curvature conforms to the contour of the surface of the lateral malleolus. The plate should now fit perfectly onto the bone contour throughout its entire length. Position the plate firmly by hand and plan the position of the first proximal screw near the fracture. Remove the plate and drill a 2.5 millimeter hole through both fibular cortices at the planned screw site. After measuring the length through the plate, Tap with the cortical tap and tap sleeve, and then insert the corresponding cortical screw. The screw should just penetrate the opposite cortical bone, but not come into contact with the tibia. The distal two screws are aimed towards the articular surface of the lateral malleolus, ensure that their tips do not protrude into the joint. We drill carefully until just penetrating the opposite cortical bone. Measure the lengths and select screws approximately 2 millimeters shorter. Tap threads only into the near fibular cortex and then insert the cortical screws. Insertion of the proximal screw. The distal screw is inserted slightly obliquely from distal to proximal. Again, choose a screw two millimeters shorter than was measured and tap the threads only in the near cortical bone. The middle plate hole remains empty as its screw would coincide with the independent cortical lag screws. All screws are gently tightened. No screw should protrude into the joint. Here we show an alternative method of fixation with an anti-glide plate. The posterior plate should obstruct both proximal and dorsal displacement of the distal fragment. The fragment is then compressed with one or two lag screws. The fracture is reduced by light traction on the distal fragment. The position is held with pointed reduction forceps the tips of which are applied in a dorsal ventral direction. We contour a four-hole, one-third tubular plate. In order to improve the anti-glide buttressing effect, the plate is slightly bent at its distal end. 
This applies a ventral suspension on the distal fragment, which puts additional compression across the fracture surfaces. Approximately 3 to 5 millimeters proximal to the dorsal tip of the distal fragment, we drill a 2.5 millimeter hole through both cortices in a dorsal ventral direction. Measure the length through the plate hole, tap with the cortical tap, and insert the first cortical bone screw. For demonstration purposes, we may now remove the pointed reduction forceps so that we can certify that the anti-glide effect has stabilized the fracture. To prevent a displacement during the remainder of the operation, we will reapply the pointed reduction forceps. Insert a second screw in the proximal plate hole in a similar manner. We now plan to insert a lag screw through the distal plate hole. Drill the gliding hole through the posterior cortex using a 3.5 millimeter drill. After inserting the insert drill sleeve, drill the anterior cortex with a 2.5 millimeter drill. Insert the cortical screw after measuring its length and after tapping the anterior fibular cortex with the cortical tap. If the bone is osteoporotic, a similar lag screw is inserted through the remaining distal plate hole.